All right, good morning, everybody. As we get started today, speaking of hard times, have you ever gone through one? You ever, you ever been walking on that journey and, and you come up and you see that mountain before you? And you're sitting there and you're looking at that mountain and you're thinking, how, how, am I going, how am I going to overcome this? Am I going to go over the mountain? Am I going to take the time to go up to where the oxygen is, is less and less? Am I going to go up to where even though it's, it's summer, there's snow and it's cold and it's lonely? Am I going to take the time? Am I going to walk around this mountain? But that's so long, and that takes so much more time. Because, see, the mountain is wide, and it has its own dangers. It has its own things around the outside. Am I going to go through the mountain? Am I going to break out a pickaxe and just start chipping away at this thing that's in front of me until there's nothing left? For any of us that have been there, for any of us that have been at that point where there's this obstacle in front of us that we just can't seem to pass. Faith. Faith is what gets us through. Faith is what gives us the strength to do whatever it takes. Faith is what gives us the uh, continuation to not give up, to not quit. Faith is what gives us the opportunity to climb the mountain, to go through the mountain, to fight whatever is around the mountain. But could you imagine your life right now without faith? For some people, for, for maybe one, maybe two in here, that could be a reality. There have been moments in my life that my faith has been weak. There have been moments in my life where my faith has been little. I wouldn't even say it was a mustard seed. Maybe I knew God. Maybe I trusted God. But not enough. So what I want to talk to us about today is I want to talk to us about faith. I want us to at least look at what it is. I want us to look at how we get it. And I want us to look at what it can do. Because that is so important. As we're going to see today, as hopefully as you'll see today, faith is one of the cornerstones, one of the rocks of of who we are in our walk with Christ. It is one of the things that ties us in and keeps us going. So if you will, open up to Hebrews chapter 11. And though we are going to be talking about faith today, I'm not really going to drag us through this chapter. So if you want kind of a a homework assignment, if you want to go home and, and read, read Hebrews 11. Give yourself a chance to see the different people that the writer talks about that are just people of faith. Go and read their stories in the different places you find them in the Bible, and you will be extremely encouraged. But for our purposes today, I want us to at least look at two verses, and we're going to start with verse 1. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You want to know what what faith is. It is the assurance of what is hoped for, but the conviction of things not seen. Now, I don't know about y'all, but but the word hope and the way it's used in the Bible and the way we use it today is, is a little different. This may not be true for everybody, but the word hope in the Bible is, well, let's start with today's word. Today, for the word hope, it's like, man, I hope it doesn't rain today, but you're sitting there and you've seen the weather prediction, you've seen the clouds in the sky, you're, you're pretty confident it's not going to rain, or that it's going to rain, but you're, you're wishful. When you hope on something, you're wishful. We, we, we really could just interchange the word wish for the word hope the way we use it today. But that's not true in the way the word hope was used in Scripture. That's not true of what the word was intended to be in Scripture. The word hope was just another word for I'm confident. You're sure of it. The hope we have for a future of Christ's return, are any of you wishing that? Or are you confident of it? 
That's where faith comes in. Faith is not a wish. Faith is not just this arbitrary hope. It's a true hope. It's a confident hope. It's something that says, I have faith that he will return. I have faith that he died on that cross and he was in the grave and he rose. I have faith that is going to happen. I have a confident hope. It's not a wish. But here's the trick. And for some of you, you've walked this road. You have more wisdom in you than I may ever have. And you understand that there's going to be so many times in your life, so many doubts that may pop into your life that don't always give you tangible answers. When I say tangible answers, I mean something that you can grab a hold of, that you can hold it, and you can say, this is a backpack. You see it. You touch it. You feel it. You open it up. You can look inside of it. Thank you. It's there. When I talk to teens, a lot of the times, I acknowledge the fact that it is hard to serve a God that you can't physically walk with. And you have the world around you physically and verbally attacking you. And maybe they don't mean it as an attack, but they're having you question your faith. They're having you dig into your faith. Do you really believe that? You can't even see it. How do you know? I'm here to tell you today that what faith is, is it's just that extra gumption that gets us to the next time where we have something to hold on to. Because there are tangible things. There are things you can study. There are things that can be proven. There are things that are true and that are real out there. And faith, it's like if you're rock climbing for your life, it's what's going to give you that extra strength to grab the next rock and get your next foothold, to get your next handhold. Because if you believe your Christian walk isn't a fight, you're mistaken. Because it is. It is mountain after mountain. You're halfway up a mountain and another mountain appears. You're like, where'd that even come from? It's a fight. And what faith is, is it's our driving force. But where do we get it? I want you to, to turn your Bibles now to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 17. It reads, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Faith comes through the word, and the word comes through Christ. We are not God. I don't have to convince any of you of that, do I? God's word is given to us in a book. And we, in our human minds, are taking God's word and we're reading it. And we're trying to understand it. We're trying to grasp it. And we're trying to just grab a hold of something to hold on to. And it can be hard, and it can be confusing. But I hope you never give up. Because it's through the constant digging of that word, it's through the constant trying to grasp of that word that is going to lead you to a stronger faith. It's not going to give you all the answers to the questions you have. It could if we truly understood God. It could if we truly understood the way things work. There will be questions, there will be doubts, and I hope none of you fear doubt because when attacked and addressed properly it makes you stronger when you acknowledge those weaknesses it grows you but none of that is going to occur your faith will not grow your faith will not appear if you abandon the word of God if your Bible is just another book on the shelf 
your faith will not grow. If, if your time with God is just even pleas of yourself and not digging in and discovering him, your faith will never grow. How can your, your faith grow if your knowledge of him stays the same? I am 29 years old, and some of you can look at me and go, wow, you're young. Wow, you don't even understand. You can't even begin to understand all the different things that are going to happen in your life and all the things that are going to occur in your life. Just as I look at these guys and I think, wow, you're still so young. You don't even understand all the things that are capable of your life. And then we even get to these younger ones. We're like, wow, they're just like a clean slate. This is so cool. What I do understand is this. My mind has changed on things. My heart has changed on things. And because of my continuous digging, my continuing in, in learning who he is, I'm not who I was yesterday. Yes, I gave my life in baptism just like a lot of us in here did. Yes, my life did change that day. I was 11 years old. I did a lot of wrong since 11. But he has continued to change me. He has continued to make me new. And that is because I've not given up on discovering who he is. That I understand now that faith is so important and I need that faith and I have to dig for that faith. I have to fight for that faith. It's not just something that's going to be a feeling that stays and goes. Because any of you that understand love in a marriage, though ours is short, love is a feeling if you allow it to be. But love is more beautiful when it's a choice and you fight for it. Faith is more beautiful when you quit letting it be a feeling and you let it be a choice and it's something you fight for. So we know what faith is. We at least have some, some guiding grounds of, of how to find it, of where to dig in for it. But why? What does faith do? What is, what is the need? What is the importance of faith. Open up with me to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. We're going to start in verse 22. We're going to we're going to go back to our whole analogy from the beginning. Those mountains in our life and how faith can be a part of that. Mark 11, verse 22. And Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and throw it into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. What can faith do? Anything. Now, I'm talking to a room full of people that have experienced illness, that have experienced death, that have experienced a loved one walking away, that have experienced a multitude of things that can be very hard to sit here and listen to some young gun stand up here and say, faith can do anything. But what I want you to understand is we don't comprehend what anything means like God does. There are things that happen in our life and we never understand how we're going to get through it, but yet somehow we do. We don't understand why this event happened, but somehow it plays a part in our life and it continues to grow us and to make us and to shape us. We don't understand why these, thi why these things had to happen but yet they're a part of who we are. I am not the biggest fan of where I grew up. I'm one of those people that I 
know one thing for certain. I will never return to where I grew up. It's just not where I want to be. And for a long time, I was very angry about where I grew up and how things went and how people treated each other and just the type of place that it was. And it was just, I, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand why it had to plague me. I didn't understand why it had to target me. But after college, I started to figure out a little bit. I didn't give up. I didn't falter. I didn't fall into the world's trap. I didn't fall in to any of these things. I continued to fight. I continued to dig. I continued to hold on to Christ. I continued to be who I felt called to be and not what I was told I was. And that fight, that event, helped make me who I am today. You're going through something right now, and I, I, really, I really do understand that, and I really do have compassion for that. In a room this size, it's very many different things. But I want you to understand that your faith can help get you through it. Your faith can help not cause you to go over the mountain, through the mountain, or around the mountain, but just move the mountain. It doesn't mean that the memory of the mountain's not still there. It doesn't mean that the scar of the event is not still there. It doesn't mean that it hasn't changed you and grown you in some form. But your faith can be powerful because your God is powerful. Don't doubt that. Don't forget that. Hebrews 11.6, if you'll flip back with me there. This will be our last time in Hebrews. But the writer says something that is very important. And this is our second point in what faith can do. Hebrews 11. Again, I want to really challenge you on your own to read this whole chapter. To dig into this whole idea of the power of faith. But the writer says in verse 6, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So again, if you're like me, that can be a scary thought. Because a lot of times in my life, I've relied on me doing good to get me back in the good. I've relied on me pushing myself to go to church. I've relied on me forcing myself to sit down and pray. I've relied on me forcing myself to read my Bible. I've relied on me forcing myself to be nice to people around me. I've relied on me to do and to do and to do. But do you understand that if there is no faith in what you do, then your doing, it's, it does nothing for God. Sure, you're a good person. I'm not going to debate that at all. There are good people in this world who do not only good things, but great things in the world. Wonderful things in the world. But if it's not done in faith, then it's not done for God. It's done for self. It's done for the person next to you. What faith does is it gives us a greater purpose. Every single one of you in here have a purpose. I hope you've never doubted that in your life. I hope uh, you younger ones listening to me, anybody from 10 to 30, I hope you understand that you really do have a purpose in this life. And even those of you that are retiring on or your kids are out of the house and you're sitting there going, what do I do now? You still have a purpose. God's even given you a greater purpose because you only, not only get to do what you do, but you do it for the kingdom. You do it in the kingdom. Faith is giving you more. Faith is giving you a life. Faith is giving you something to hold on to, to not give up on. It gets very easy to sit back and wonder, well, what am I good for? But in the kingdom, in God, 
You're good for anything. You're good for everything. There's not a one of you that is not useful and needed in this room right now. When you're not here, I hope you don't think you're not missed. I hope you don't think we don't notice. Even if it's not me coming up to you saying, I've really missed you for the past month. Where have you been? I hope you know that what you bring to the table, what you bless each one of us with, even if it's one other person in this room, that's why you're here. Not just at this building, not just at this church, but on this planet to encourage, to love. And your faith is what gives you that purpose. Your faith is what gives you that drive. To wrap up this point, turn over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read for y'all verses 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Because of this purpose that comes from our faith, because of this drive that we have to do, faith does even more. If you read with me, verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. It's not that our specific works have been prepared beforehand. God's given us tasks and duties to do that we see and we grab a hold of and we run with them. But it's not those works, it's not the me, me, me doing It's the God, God, God working in me. That's the faith I have. That's the drive I have. It's those those things that, that do good in the world, but it's not those things that drive us to his grace. It's that faith that drives us further each time. It's that act of kindness where we think back to Christ that at the end of the day we go, wow, that's who my Savior was in person. It's those times we huddle around the broken up here at the front and we tell them that it is okay. We tell them that they're forgiven. We tell them that we're going to walk with them because that's what our God did. It's not the actions, it's the faith behind it all. Even even the book of James, verses 14 through 26, chapter 2. A lot of people pair these passages against each other. They say Paul preaches that it's faith and it's not works. But then James comes in and he says that you can't have faith without works. And so some people have even excluded James. They say, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Clearly Paul knows. But why do they have to be in conflict? Look at James chapter 2, starting with verse 14. He says, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Why do they have to be in conflict? Why does it have to be one or the other? What if what James is really saying here is that if you truly have faith, how are you not acting? If you truly have faith, how are you not running out to those in need? If you truly have faith, what is holding you back? Paul says, it is your faith that leads you to grace. What if part of that grace is what we do for others? What if it's our faith that leads us there? It can become very easy to get caught up in where you are. It can get very easy to get caught up in who you are. It can get very easy to get caught up in all these things that are around you. 
But I truly believe that our faith not only speaks for us to God, but it's also God speaking to us for others. We are a very, very talented group of people. And we are a very, very blessed group of people. I pray today that you find some way to show your faith. I don't have a doubt that it's there. I believe that it's there. Maybe for a few of you, you're, you're struggling with your faith. You're battling with the idea of faith. And, and I get that. And part of this sermon was for you today to tell you exactly what it is and to begin those steps of how to get it. But for some of us today, we have the faith, but we don't know what to do with it. We have it, and we, we understand that there's needs out there, but we don't know where to begin. And, and I will tell you what I tell these guys all the time, that it's not about changing the world. It's about changing someone's world. You can be a world changer by changing one life. None of us know who these young people are going to grow up to become, right? They could become anything. They could be the next governor, the next president. They could be the next, who knows, CEO of a Fortune 500 company. You never know the part you could play in their life. Even the stranger on the street, you never know the part they could play in someone else's life. That coworker that gets under your skin. I believe that the majority of us in here have a heart and have a heart for God and want to serve. But we don't always know where to begin. Because a lot of times it looks like what Michael and I do up here at the front. A lot of times it looks like those that are able to go on those foreign mission trips. It looks like those that, that, that don't have the full-time jobs that are able to get out there and really dig in and get their hands dirty. But it could be as simple as just one person and loving on that one person and brightening the day of that one person until they, understands God's, until they understand God's love. And they begin to understand the faith that you have. And they begin creating their own faith. So to end, we're going to finish today looking at Matthew 7. I ended my Wednesday night lesson here with the kids this past Wednesday. And it's honestly, in my adult life, the one verse that has probably shaken me the most. It is the one verse that has challenged me the most to really understand that there's more to what we're doing than just kind of what we do on the daily. Matthew 7, we're going to start with verse 15. He says, Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Now, I've told you all the story before about me eating the apple, so I'm not going to go there today. But I do want you all to understand this. We are all trees in the garden of God. And all of us are bearing some sort of fruit, or even more dangerously, we're not bearing fruit of all, which seems to be an automatic cut down. You can bear fruit and it still not be good fruit. Do y'all understand that? You can do things, you can be good, but it itself not be what's ultimately good to God. You can also be bad. 
You can be stagnant. There are true outcomes. But I want to warn us of all of today is verse 21 and following. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. That passage right there is the one I told you of. The one that's, that shakes me, the one that continues to shake me today. Because as a teacher, as an educator in the church, I, I am training young minds. I'm training young people to be those faithful people. And it terrifies me to know that if I do it, if I'm not allowing God to use me, I don't want it to seem like I'm doing anything. But if I don't allow myself to be used properly, it could be detrimental. And if I don't warn my fellow brothers and sisters that if we aren't doing everything in true faith, if we are not devoting ourselves fully to God in both actions and heart, it can be truly detrimental. It can be truly an outcome that we do not long for. So my challenge to you today is this. Where's your faith at? Do you have it? If so, is it in God? If it's not, what is it in? What's got you so wrapped up thinking that it's going to protect you, that it's going to save you? But if it is, if you've got your faith, if you know it's there, then my challenge to you is this. Act on it. Act on it. Don't worry about what the world thinks. Don't worry about what the people in this room think. If you truly believe, if you truly see a need, run after it. Serve God full-heartedly. If it's something we need to call you back on, all right, we'll do so. But chances are there's so many needs in the world that we can run after that are okay. We just need to do so. There's so many things that maybe need to be done here and around here. Just, just do it. There's so many things that need to be done in our communities. There's so many things that maybe need to be done in our own homes. Just do it. Let your faith give you that driving force, give you that purpose, give you something to hold on to when the tangible's not there to get you to the next moment. I hope you see how important your faith is.